Hi pilots, welcome to another product pirate video from Sporties. If you're stuck at home for a while, one of the great things you can do to stay current is use a home flight simulator system. And there's never been better options than right now. So let's go over some of the hardware choices, but first let's consider what a flight simulator is good for and not good for. A flight simulator in your home, we're not talking about a full motion flight simulator like you'd use at Flight Safety. But a home flight simulator can be very useful for keeping up your instrument scan. It's good for procedures. It's good for cockpit familiarity. A lot of kind of the routines you do on a typical flight is very helpful. It is not good for practicing crosswind landings or steep turns or stalls or those maneuvers. So keep in mind what you can and can't do with this. It's not a complete replacement for flying in the airplane, but there are some good things that can be done to keep your skills sharp. Some people get really worried about what's legal and what can I log with one of these flight simulators. I would encourage you not to worry about that. The FAA has made some changes recently, so it's easier to log instrument currency at home. So for example, you can log your six month IFR currency without a flight instructor there. That's great. The problem is you need to have an aviation training device. The least expensive way to do that is with a Redbird TD. You can do that for about $8,000. So for a lot less than a full motion simulator, but I'm gonna guess that that's beyond the budget of most people watching this. So you can't really log instrument currency at home with a typical yoke and throttle setup. That doesn't mean it's not valuable. If a flight simulator set up in your home saves you time in the airplane, then it pays for itself quickly. So if you can do a flight review in one hour instead of two hours, or if you can maintain instrument currency just on your skills in less time, a flight simulator can still save you tons of money even if you can't quote unquote log it. So with those details out of the way, let's talk about what we have. And the base of any flight simulator system should be a yoke. There are four main options out there today, starting just over $100, going up to about $800. First is the CH Products yoke. This has been around a long time. This is one of the stalwarts. Uh, it's the least expensive option out there, under $150. It's a nice all-in-one package. You've got a yoke, You've also got a throttle mixture and prop control built in on top here. And you have two levered, two buttons here really. Typically used one for flaps, one for gear. And then switches on top for trim. Uh, you can change views. You can assign different things to these buttons. It is plastic. It doesn't have quite as realistic a control feel. It's sort of a springy feel when you pull back. So it's not, a, it's not gonna feel like you're flying a 172. But for the price as an all-in-one unit, it's a really good option. Stepping up a little bit, just over $150, you have the SciTech or Logitech controls. This is another very popular unit that's been out there for many years. This has a metal shaft and has a little bit more realistic feel on the controls. Uh, it also comes with a separate throttle quadrant. So you can see there, you can attach that to a table or a desk separately from the yoke. You've got the typical throttle mixture and prop. You've also got some buttons down here again for lights or landing gear, whatever you might want and your typical controls here, as well as a timer on the front. This is a good kind of all-in-one, maybe step up, a little more realistic feel, a uh, few more options, and is probably the most popular overall. Next is the Honeycomb. And this is a newer option. This just came out within the last year. A little more expensive, about $250, but it does have some nice features. It has a solid steel shaft. And so in our experience, it has a more realistic feel on the controls. It's still not totally authentic. It's still got that centering spring that's gonna provide a little more feedback than a real airplane. But overall, it has a nice feel to it and it's well made. One good thing, one bad thing about the Honeycomb in our opinion. Good thing is you've got basically a switch panel built in. So you've got a split master switch, you've got an avionics switch here, you've got light switches, you've even got a magneto switch over here on the side plus the typical controls on the yoke itself. That's really nice because with a Logitech, for example, you have to add on a switch panel separately. The problem is there is no throttle built into this. And for realistic training, we think a throttle is important. You could add on one of these Logitech throttles, or you could add on a Redbird throttle. That's gonna cost you more money. Uh, but if you're looking for a great yoke, that's still maybe something you wanna consider is the honeycomb and either controlling the throttle with a computer, keyboard or mouse, or with one of these add-on options. Finally, stepping up to the top is the Redbird Alloy. This is about $800, so this is in a sort of a whole different price category, but this is really the most robust of them all. This has got a solid metal case. It's really built to rugged standards. These are basically the controls off of that $8,000 Redbird TD. 
uh, that have just been in a portable format. So very realistic control forces, um, really well made. You don't have the switch panel and you don't have a throttle. You have to add that on separately. But there are options for both a Cessna style push-pull throttle and a Piper style lever throttle quadrant made by Redbird that you can add on to this. This may be overkill for your casual pilot or flight sim enthusiast, but if you're using it in uh, maybe a flight school or a flying club and it's gonna be used a lot, the really rugged construction here is something to consider. Redbird also provides outstanding support. So if you have questions, they've been great about that. So once you have a yoke, you're obviously gonna need some software. The options are pretty simple there. Right now it's X-Plane 11. Uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator is supposedly coming out with a new edition later this year, but that's up in the air. And so for right now, X-Plane is your option. The only other accessory to consider is rudder pedals. That really does add realism and provides a lot more value in your training. There are rudder pedals available from CH Products, from Logitech, and from Redbird. They're all basically the same features, just differences in construction and price. But we think with a flight sim software like X-Plane, with a yoke and with rudder pedals, you've got a great home simulator setup. Thanks for joining us in Sporty Store for another Product PyRep video. Make sure to subscribe to this channel on YouTube for more videos like this and check out sporties.com for all your flight simulator products.